Hello everybody, this is Gary. Today is September 16th, Tuesday, 2019. It's 1.29 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States in Rochester, New York. And this is my coping with schizophrenia vlog entry for today. Today I wanted to talk about obesity and poor diet. I'm not a uh, religious fanatic or a nutritional fanatic who believes that you should stop seeing your psychiatrist, go off all your meds, and have a healthy, natural, vegetarian diet to cure your schizophrenia. That's not what I'm saying in this video. If you're seeing a psychiatrist and you're psychotic, you need to take your meds. Um, but there's a drawback um, on taking certain meds if you're not careful, and that's obesity, and then later on diabetes. Just as an example, because this is the medication I'm on, um, and I don't really have uh, the expertise or uh, experience of taking many other psychotropic antipsychotic drugs. Um, for me, I've taken drugs like Zyprexa and Seroquel, which are newer antipsychotics than someone Older ones like Thorazine or Heldol. Um, but they all have the ability to contribute to obesity or being overweight in psychiatric patients. Um, Seroquel has been known to cause diabetes after it causes obesity. What Seroquel does is it actually turns off a part of your brain that tells you when you're no longer hungry. Um, therefore, you always have a craving for food because you don't know that your stomach is full, you're not hungry anymore, and you don't need to eat as much as you're eating. Um, Seroquel takes away your ability to feel full, and so you have cravings for food. And those cravings are usually not very healthy. It's not like you're picking out on lettuce and carrots. It's usually junk food, sugar, fats, salt, McDonald's, candy, um, chocolate, uh, things that are just generally not healthy and have a lot of sugar in them. And so in the case of Seroquel, it causes weight gain first. And then if that weight gain goes on too high or too long, some psychiatric patients have been known because they're taking Seroquel of developing diabetes and Seroquel has been, the company that makes Seroquel has been sued for that. They've made payouts um, for the diabetes and obesity. But the diabetes and obesity are not outside the control of prevention um, by psychiatric patients. They actually do have the ability, even if they're on Seroquel, not to gain weight and not to get diabetes. And psychiatrists have to be more proactive and working with the general practitioner on keeping up a good exercise and diet program for people who are on antipsychotics. My weight last year dropped down to 160 pounds because I lost my appetite, and now it's back up around 200. But I've been high on as uh, 260 pounds while I was on circle. And since I wasn't exercising and I was eating the wrong foods, um, I simply gained weight. I never developed diabetes. I'm lucky that way. But it could have been if I didn't start seriously taking control of what was happening. I had to diet. I had to exercise. And I eventually lost 60 pounds because I had reached as high as 260 pounds. And I'm 200 pounds now, give or take or so, a few pounds. And um, so I had the ability, even though Seroquel contributed to my overeating, um, and my cravings for sugar and salt and fat, that doesn't mean I didn't have conscious control over what was happening. I was able to exercise. I went jogging outside during the winter. I brought uh, or bought a treadmill machine uh, into my apartment so you, I could run in place on that treadmill. Um, I changed my diet to more vegetables, um, meats that were lean and not filled with fat. Um, Eventually, my primary care physician wrote a, a prescription for an anti 
I forget the word, um, a stimulant that you take to help you lose weight, um, and, uh, gives you more sense that you're, uh, have more energy and have less appetite, um, and they have appetite suppressant, um, it's a stimulant in my case they gave me, um, I forget the name of it, um, but it was a stimulant along the lines of uh, methamphetamine. So I was given this drug, appetite suppressant stimulant, um, for three months, and it helped me gain, or I'm sorry, lose about 20 pounds in three months because it, as a stimulant gave me more physical energy to exercise and be on the treadmill and go jogging and lift weights. Um, and once I lost 20 pounds, I was taking off the appetite suppression because it can be addictive. They are a lot with um, amphetamine or Ritalin um, and similar drugs or like Adderall. Um, and they can be addictive. So I agreed with my general practitioner that I would take this drug, Fenteramine, appetite suppression for three months. And whatever happened after that was my responsibility because they took me off the drug after two or three months. And any weight that I lost after that was up to me in my exercise and my diet. And I eventually got my weight down back to around 200 degrees, which is normal for me. And that's where I am now. But psychiatrists and general practitioners need to be more coordinated and planning uh, diet and exercise for psychiatric patients who are on drugs that could easily make them balloon in weight. I've seen some of my friends go from, uh, who are about my height um, and weight, male and female, I've seen them become extremely obese because while they're taking their psychiatric drugs, they're totally <coughs> in a sedentary, I'm sorry, I don't know what the word is. They're in a lifestyle that has no physical activity at all and they're eating junk. Um, and I've seen them balloon up over a hundred pounds overweight while they're taking psychiatric drugs. Um, and the psychiatrists and the medical doctors will not be more uh, proactive in encouraging diet and exercise in mentally ill people who take drugs that make them gain weight and could cause them to have diabetes. Um, that's one of the drawbacks of psychiatry. Psychiatry is not perfect and as a message to psychiatrists, they have to be more proactive. And as far as any mental patients who are psychotic, who are watching this video, you have to take some responsibility for your diet and exercise. Um, see a nutritionist, create a diet plan and an exercise plan. It doesn't have to be an extreme exercise program. Um, like walking is an exercise riding your bike. Um, I'm not saying you need to train physically like a prize fighter or somebody who's in the Olympics. I'm just saying you need more physical activity. I believe the word is sedentary lifestyle where you're not physically doing anything and you're eating junk. So this is a message to psychiatrists and general practitioners. They need to work together to be more proactive to help mentally ill people not gain weight, make sure they're eating the right foods um, as much as possible. And this is also a message to anybody who's psychotic, um, but has some awareness of their weight gain. Um, you need to diet, you need to exercise. Um, what diet is best, I can't say. I can only speak for what worked with me. Um, I ate a lot of lettuce, a lot of kale, a lot of uh, uh, cabbage, a lot of different plant-based foods, but I didn't go vegetarian. I'm still eating meat and dairy products, and it's all about portion size. Um, so the message of this video is mentally ill people do have the ability, regardless of what their drug they're on, to not gain weight once they start taking a drug like Seroquel. Um, they can prevent it if they start exercising and diet, just as they're being prescribed for the first time Seroquel. Um, 
they have the ability that is the patient has the ability to exercise on a regular basis and diet and um, regardless of whether or not they're having cravings for food they don't have to give in to those cravings they do if they can't give in stop giving in to the uh, cravings for food they could use foods that are not going to make them gain 100 pounds like a um, vegetables and fruits um, and like I said I personally did not be, go I personally did not go vegan or vegetarian I think that's kind of extreme and makes a person lose too much nutrition um, I did eat meat fish chicken beef that was lean pork that was as lean as possible um, but uh, mentally ill people have to take a degree of responsibility for what they're doing as far as their diet is concerned. Um, and the best place to go for that is to see a nutritionist. And psychiatrists and general practitioners out there, you need to always refer your patients to a nutritionist who have not yet gained 100 pounds. Because once you've gained 100 pounds, after being on a drug like Seroquel for a while, it's very difficult to lose that weight. It's better to be preventative um, and work with a nutritionist and an exercise expert. It's better to start the exercise and diet planning before somebody gains 100 pounds or in my case 60 pounds too much. So if anybody else has any suggestions, like, subscribe, share, um, leave your comments.